really is the secret to success on Depop. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to All I Know About Depop. Today I wanted to talk about the mistakes that I see people making and the mistakes that I made that really slowed down my journey of becoming a Depop top seller. It took me seven months to become a Depop top seller, which I think is actually pretty quick. But looking back, I definitely made mistakes that slowed down my journey. And I think if I was to do it all over again, I could do it a lot quicker. So make sure you're not making these mistakes with your Depop shop and stay tuned to the end because I have saved the best tip until until last. <laughs> Mistake number one is buying the wrong items. It looks like I have no stock, woman. Depop have said it themselves. The two best things that sell on Depop are vintage and branded items. So if you source items that don't fall into either of these categories, you do run the risk of buying stock that isn't desirable and isn't in demand. And this can lead you to get stuck with stock that does not sell. I see a lot of people selling fast fashion, a lot of people selling high street, I've also made this mistake before. These pieces just aren't good sellers on Depop and if they do sell, they tend to go for like a really low price. It's kind of in the nature of high street and fast fashion that it's like low quality, affordable pieces. So if you're then trying to resell them and they're second hand, the value goes down even more. So they're really not gonna help you reach the top seller requirements. The stock you do want to buy is vintage items, so anything from the 2000s and before, or branded pieces, and um, by branded pieces I don't just mean anything that has like a tag on it. There are certain brands that are in demand because they are like cool or because they are really good quality or both. At the minute brands like Tommy Hilfiger, Ralph Lauren, Doc Martens, New Balance, etc. The best way to find out what brands are trending is to check out the explore page or to check Depop emails. If you can find an item that is vintage or branded and also a trending piece, that is the sweet spot of sourcing. For example, low rise jeans are really in at the minute. If you can find vintage low rise jeans from a desirable brand, then that is a great piece of stock for your shop. Man, and these angles. Mistake number two is not refreshing enough. I definitely could have done more of this on my journey to becoming a top seller. It's a really boring task, but it really does help get more sales and more traction to your shop. I think if you really want it, it's a mistake to not be refreshing every day. It's super mindless, so like do it in the evening when you're watching TV and make sure you do it on Sunday and Monday evening because they are the most popular times for Depop. So there's more chance of getting your stuff noticed when everyone's on the app. So if you're gonna bump at any time, make sure it's definitely Sunday and Monday evening. So don't forget to bump. Mistake number three is not accepting offers. Most likely you're gonna be trying to hit the 50 plus items a month requirements, unless you're selling like designer items. So your aim is to sell 12, 13 items every week that have an average price of 15 pounds. If you wanna speed up getting to that top seller goal, then I think it's always a good idea, well actually not always, but I think it's mostly a good idea to accept any offer that comes in that's over 15 pound. Say if someone offers you 20 pound for a 25 pound jacket that you've listed, accept it. Personally, if I was trying to get to the top seller requirements, I would just accept it. I think at the beginning, it's best to just keep things moving, keep making them sales, especially as you're trying to hit these requirements. You're trying to do 50 items every month. Every item that you sell is one step closer to reaching that target. Obviously, if it's like a 90 pound coat and they offer you 20 quid, you don't, you don't, you probably shouldn't accept that, that's a bit of a low ball. But if it's a few pounds less than what you were asking for, then I think it's always worth accepting the offer. My fourth mistake is spending too much time promoting elsewhere. I think this is one of my biggest mistakes that slowed down my journey to becoming a top seller. I spent a lot of time at the start of my Depop shop trying to grow a Instagram, posting things to Pinterest, I thought this was the right thing to do. Everyone seems to say, you know, to grow a good business, you need to grow on social media. What I didn't realize is I, I hadn't actually created an established business yet. So I wasn't, I didn't really know what I was promoting. I was promoting a shop that didn't have many listings, didn't have any followers on Depop. 
didn't have good stock. On top of this, I found social media to be a lot of hard work. It was something that I didn't enjoy and I didn't seem to be naturally very good at it. And from all the time that I spent trying to figure out Instagram and to grow on Instagram, if I'd have just put all that time into getting better at photos, adding more listings and getting better at finding good stock, then I think I would have been able to speed up my process of becoming a top seller a lot quicker. Okay, so this is my final mistake that I think is the most crucial, that I see the most often that I made this mistake and if anything, just listen to this one. So my fifth mistake is not listing enough. Personally, I think listing is boring and hard work, but it is crucial in running a successful Depop shop. If I started again and there was a hypothetical race of who could get to the top seller status first, my tactic would purely be to list like mad. Even three years in, if I want my sales to go up, I've got to list more. Listing really is the secret to success on Depop. I think I spent a lot of time on my journey of becoming a Depop top seller, really trying to figure out how, how on earth I was gonna bring in more sales when really the answer was so simple. If you list more, you will sell more. If you list more, you will sell more. I actually had a Depop call recently with a like employee of Depop and I, I asked him like how many listings should I be adding every week if I wanna, you know, go to the next level with my shop. And he said for a regular successful Depop shop, 30 listings every week is a good amount to aim for. But then he said the shops that are in like the top 1%, so like the really, really big shops, they are actually adding up to 200 listings per week, which is mad. <laughs> but it just shows that there's a reason why they're big shops. It's because they're able to add so many listings. And obviously they do have employees, which probably makes the workload a lot more doable. But you know, the evidence is clear. If you wanna sell more, you gotta list more. I sometimes hear people say, Depop isn't working for me, or Depop is dead, or like I can't grow, I I give up with Depop, like I, I'm working so hard and I don't know why it's not growing. And then I'll go and like click on their shop and they'll have like five listings. Like of course your shop isn't growing, your shop is tiny. Your listing count needs to be in the hundreds to even be on your way to becoming a top seller. Trust me, prioritize listings and you will see more sales. And shortcut your path to becoming a top seller. Okay, if this video has helped in any way, then be sure to check out these. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time.